Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is assignment four for CompTIA Plus. And in this assignment, we're going to talk about installation, specifically, you know, about server rooms and servers. And we start off with the topic of what is a server room. Now, a server room is a room that houses servers, mainly computer servers. And uh, typically, server rooms usually contain headless computers, just full in a rack mount, for example, that are controlled by basically a KVM switch to a single monitor, for example. So you can switch between the various computers and uh, be pretty uh, efficient on how you look at them. There are a number of steps of planning that you need to take into account. So I'm. S if you're young in your career, you'll be working on a team. And if you're new, you've done, you're an old hat and you don't even need to listen to this video. But first of all, you want to write down and sketch everything out. You want to verify the installation and make sure it meets requirements, the cooling, the power, the UPS, the cabling, the operating system. You verify that the hardware is compatible with the operating system that you're using. Verify that you have your UPS so you can have, so whenever you have a controlled shutdown, you'll be able to go through that process smoothly and not have an interrupt. You want to verify the network availability. You want to go there and find out, hey, I've got this server room and everything's hooked up, but I can't access the Internet. Make sure that's all taken care of. And verify your inventory. So when you've got your list together, you know all the equipment that you put together, you're ready to bring everything in and start your work, make sure the equipment's there. And that not just ordering it, not just have someone say it came in, but looking in the boxes and making sure the hardware is there and putting your hands on the actual hardware itself. Make sure as you put your servers together that you do follow good ESD, uh, electrostatic discharge uh, procedures, and avoid all the ESD that you might get. Even if you don't feel it, you still can be destroying components, and they may work at first, but they may degrade very rapidly. So very important to do that. So many technicians are not paying attention to uh, ESD procedures these days, but it's so essential. And let me t give you an experience. I fried four motherboards in one afternoon. Uh, when I in my very early days, and from then on, I've always used a uh, proper ESD. Uh, and then in the assignment, I just go through an entire set of videos that Professor Matterster puts out on installing processors, and I give you my notes on installing processors, troubleshooting processors, installing memory, troubleshooting memory, installing uh, you know hard disk. Uh, uh, I have two videos there, and SCSI chains as well and installing network uh, subsystem. So it's a, it's a great uh, chapter. Make sure you read chapter three and four in your textbook and I have uh, 10 questions for you to answer. Here's a KVM switch just to show you how that works. You may have three computers all hooked into a KVM switch and the switch actually can access any one of those computers just by switching a switch. Uh, just a few tips on uh, server rack mounts. Number one, when you put together a server rack mount, make sure you build a rack mount from bottom up. Put the heaviest devices at the bottom. Uh, consistently number your servers. Uh, you know, when you have a few, it's not a problem, but it, it won't take long until you have so many servers that you don't, you won't know which one is which. You want to make sure you can distinguish them with their different numbers. Of course, use a KVM switch that we've already mentioned that will uh, increase your efficiency. You have to, by the way. Place servers attached to the same KVM console close in proximity. Group servers by functionality. So you may be doing some type of work, a speciality in some type of field. You want all those grouped together so you can actually don't have to work, walk across the room and work on another server somewhere. Uh, just keep them all together. Be prepared to access the rear of the rack. Sometimes people have these always against the wall and it's very difficult and they may be several server racks put together and it can be quite a pain, especially if you have to access that back quickly, for example, to replace a power supply or what. Uh, place servers that require frequent access and relatively accessible areas. If you're constantly accessing that server, make sure it's out so you can get to it. Some servers don't need that much access, so you can actually place them away. Specifically, security servers, make sure those are in eye view, that uh, everyone can see who's going in there. And make sure you have those things locked up. I mean, there's so many server racks out there that uh, just have free access. People can gain access into that room. Sometimes through social engineering, or maybe you've lost your card, and they're in there, and they're in servers, and they aren't locked. So make sure you take care of that, especially when you're working with high security servers. Uh, limit the number of rack you tie together. So you might need to move something around, or there may be an emergency, and you need to start moving racks. And if they're locked, you're going to have difficulty. And once again, just for your own safety, be careful about sliding equipment in and out of a rack and cut yourself. So. Uh, Sometimes it's heavy and you can drop it, so be careful uh, you know, that you don't drop it on your toes. Uh, a little bit of information about virtual machines and how to install them, and uh, important facts or things you need to look into when you're actually working in a server site, temperature, air humidity, flooring, power, EMI, ESD, for example. And uh, then there's a homework assignment. I have 10 questions that you need to actually go through and answer, and those will come from these notes and also from reading chapter 3 and 4 of your textbook. 
And so that was uh, assignment four. Uh, good luck. It's, it's, it's very interesting. I think server rooms are fascinating. I've certainly spent my time in them, and, and I've actually enjoyed working in server rooms and with servers. So I'll see you next time. This is Mike Lively. Thanks for listening.